to order. We will have the invocation by the Reverend William Chamber Sr. But with the Church of the Nazarene, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance with Police Explorers and Councilwoman Waldman. Please rise. Our great Father, Creator of all peace, Creator of our world, our universe, and all that was made was made by you. And each of us have a place in life to serve each other. And in serving each other, to be serving you. We thank you for our council. And each one of them in their office that they have and the responsibility that they have. And realize from your example, Lord, of when you're here on earth, that we have to have God with us in his power to see the miracles done that we need done here in our city. We need protection. That's a miracle for all the police and firemen and those in harm's way to be protected. We need wisdom. That's a miracle, Lord, for you to give us wisdom to think properly and come at the right conclusion, the conclusion that you would come at in every situation. So as you started in your prayer before you performed one of your great miracles of feeding the multitude, you says, thank you, Father. For what? For five loaves and two little fishes? No, for having the opportunity to do things to serve people through the power that he had. And this council and each one here has the power to serve our city in a miraculous way. And we may not see the full results tomorrow, but it may take a lifetime to see it. But by your wisdom and your power, may great things be done, and they be able to look at the life work that they have given and say, Thank you, Father, for the miracle that you've done of giving me a choice to live for you. We ask this, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. Please join the police explorers and I in pledging allegiance to our great nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Mayor Bell. Here. Vice Mayor Burgess. Present. Councilwoman Lobos. Yes. Councilman McCormick. Here. Councilman Nelson. Here. Councilwoman Sierra. Here. Councilwoman Waldman. Here. Additions, deletions, deferrals. None. Thank you. We will now have a plaque presentation to Greg Ivey of Audio and Video Solutions. Let me first tell you a little bit about Greg Ivey. Greg has volunteered his time and audio equipment for many years to the city's Human Relations Board. In particular, he has arranged the audio for the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. breakfast, and without his assistance and oversight before and during the breakfast, the audience would not have been able to have enhanced sound and enjoy the wonderful presentations and music. Mr. Ivey works for the Community Health of South Florida, Inc., better known to the community as CHI, 
And the city of Homestead is very, very fortunate to have such a dedicated individual, one who not only volunteers his time, but also his technical abilities and sound equipment. Thank you very much, Mr. Ivey, and we really do sincerely appreciate all you do for the city of Homestead, and we have something for you. And it reads, it's a key to our city. In sincere appreciation to Greg Ivey for your dedica dedication and untying efforts on behalf of the City of Homestead Mayor and City Council, February 4th, 2008. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. Thank you so much. We're keeping him very, very busy. <clears throat> um, I was delighted to attend the rodeo appreciation dinner this uh, right before the rodeo, and we had a wonderful, wonderful dinner. And they expressed their thanks, and um, I was so delighted to be um, the grand marshal of the rodeo parade for the first time in my life. And it was a wonderful parade, and it was just a, just a delight. And they really, really do appreciate the city of Homestead. And they presented a plaque to Parks and Recreation, please come forward, and to the Public Works Department on behalf of the Rodeo Association. Is anybody here from Parks and Recreation? Creation and Public Works, please come forward. There's a beautiful plaque for your department on behalf of the Rodeo Association. It says, Rodeo Association Appreciation presented to Parks and Recreation, City of Homestead, for your outstanding and support of the 59th Annual Homestead Rodeo, January 25th through the 27th, 2008. One for the Parks and Recreation and one for you as well, Julio. Thank you so much. Good job. Thank you very much. What, what picture? Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. And now we'll have a, the brand new Home Depot that's on 288th Street. We'll have a presentation uh, from Home Depot with Chang Kropa, Operations Manager of Home Depot, and Cecia Obergon, the Human Resources Manager of Home Depot. Are you here? Did she just do that? Not yet. Well, what we'll do is we'll just wait on that for a few more minutes, and if they walk in, we'll go ahead and bring that presentation. We have a special presentation for, for our uh, Angel Room's mom, so we'll just have to wait on that. I hope it's okay. As long as the baby holds out. Babies hold out, right? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Councilwoman Waldman, Greater Miami Convention and Vis Visitors Bureau Destination Marketing Accreditation Announcement. Councilwoman Thank Waldman. Thank you. That's a mouthful of um, as many of you know, I am a um, elected board of director for the Greater Miami Visitors and Convention Bureau and have been for many years. And for many years, they have been trying to receive this particular accreditation. And on November 9, 2007, the, I'll just say the Bureau announced that it had been awarded this prestigious accreditation from the Designation Marketing Accreditation Program. DMAP is an international program developed by Washington, D.C.-based Destination Marketing Association International. <clears throat> In earning this accreditation, <clears throat> sorry, I have a terrible cold, Destination Marketing Organizations communicate, communicate to their community buyers and potential visitors that their DMO was attained with a significant measure of excellence. We've been pursuing this for a very long time, and um, I can tell you that it's very rare that this is awarded. Um, only 6% of the 650 worldwide members are accredited. So um, I just want to say I'm very proud of the bureau that I serve on and I'm very proud because this will open doors for all of us in Dade County, including the South Dade area. So thank you, Mayor Bill, for allowing me to mention that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Walpin. I will now entertain a motion for approval of the consent agenda. I move. I second. The consent agenda has been properly moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. And the ayes carry. Public hearing. Please be, please be advised that the following items on the agenda are quasi-judicial in nature. If you wish to comment on any of these items, please indicate the item number you would like to address when the announcement regarding the quasi-judicial item is made. An opportunity for a person to speak on each item will be made available after the applicant and staff have made their presentations on each item. 
swearing in all testimony, including public testimony and evidence to be made under oath or affirmation. Additionally, each person who gives testimony may be subject to cross-examination. If you do not wish either to be cross-examined or sworn, your testimony will be given its due weight. The general public will not be permitted to cross-examine witnesses, but the public may request the counsel to ask questions of staff or witnesses on their behalf. The full agenda packet on each item is hereby entered into the record. Persons representing organizations must present evidence of their authority to speak for the organization. Further details of the quasi-judicial procedures may be obtained from the clerk. In accordance with Code Section 2591, any lobbyist must register before addressing the counsel on any of the following items. At this time, counsel members must disclose any ex parte communications on any items on the agenda. At this time, the clerk will swear in any persons who wish to testify in any quasi-judicial item. Please stand and raise your right hand. I state your name. Hereby swear or affirm that the information I present shall be the truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Thank you. Item 10 is the first reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, considering the request of John D. Stevens for a rezoning from General Use District D to Retail Commercial District B2 for property located on the southeast corner of Farm Life School Road and North Canal Drive, as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. This is first reading. I'll entertain a motion. I move it. Second it. It's been properly moved and seconded. We will now open the public hearing and I'd like to have staff report. I'm sorry. Good evening, Mayor and the Council. This is a three-acre parcel on the southeast corner of Lucy and the 62nd. The existing land use, the existing zoning right now is commercial. The applicant is asking for B2 and they do have a site plan that is under review right now in our office. The staff recommends approval of this zoning. Thank you. Staff recommends as well as planning and zoning. Thank you so much. Would the applicant like to present? Good evening, Madam Mayor, members of the Council. For the record, my name is Chad Williard. I'm the attorney for the applicant. My address is 999 Ponce de Leon Boulevard in Coral Gables. This is an item for first reading. We have staff support and we've been through the process thus far. We have a rather lengthy agenda. If you'd like the full presentation, we can make it now. Otherwise, we're here to answer questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any comments or questions from staff? Please. I'm just wondering, I mean, I agree with the P&Z pass forward. Anything there would look better than what's there right now. So whoever made that comment, they were right on. The other thing I'd like to know is with it being so close to a school, I was wondering if the applicant may consider, and one of the things that they do, just so we don't have loitering in the afternoon, of maybe placing a security guard there from, say, whatever time school's out until 6 o'clock, just so that we don't have a problem with loitering in that area and things like that. So that's one of my concerns. And then my other concern was, I believe on the northwest corner of that intersection, this being the southeast, we went from being residential to a commercial over there. And I was wondering if all the traffic studies have been taken into account with the change of that and the different loads of traffic that are going to be on the highway at different times and all that, and make sure that all the concurrency, I guess, has been met for the traffic and that, you know, with that new, with the new thing. So that was one of my questions for staff. Yes. Usually the concurrency goes with the site, when the site plan comes to our office. During the time of land use change or zoning, we don't require a traffic study, mainly because we don't know what the site plan is going to put in that. At the time of site plan, we ask for concurrency and we move forward with traffic study review. And this one, it does have a traffic study, but we are going to talk about it when it comes to you at the site plan review. Okay. Further comments or questions from counsel? Not at this time. Roll call, Madam Clerk. He wanted to comment back to me. 
I believe the gentleman at the front. If I may, just to respond back. Ahead. Ahead. And, and staff uh, addressed that accurately. We've got this lined up where this request will come back for second reading two weeks from now, along with the site plan approval, where uh, clearly I mean, we want to have as, as uh, clean and, and secure a, a site uh, as possible. So it's <coughs> good business in addition to being the, the responsible thing to do, so we can definitely uh, look into the issue of security guards <coughs> and control ordering and that sort, of, that sort of thing. But we'll discuss all of those issues, I believe, respectfully. At the, at the next meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Waltman. Just, just a quick uh, question. I know that I, I believe that the traffic um, study that was done on the um, n was it northwest corner there was done when it was uh, going to be single family homes and when that strip center was approved by council then townhouses were allowed there. So is the traffic study, I don't think a new traffic study has been done on that particular corner. So I just want to make sure that when this project moves forward that we have a traffic study on the other corner with townhouses instead of single family homes. I'm sure that the project comes, we will make sure to review all the traffic study to have all the current information in the traffic study. Because I know there was a traffic study done, but that was before we, oh, this council, well not this council, but the last council, approved the strip center and from single family home to townhouses. Uh, or next week, uh, or next council meeting, when the traffic study comes, I, I am going to confirm with you that uh, all the traffic from the northwest, it is in there or not. Uh, I really don't have the correct information right now regarding the northwest corner project. I think that's very point. important. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Robles? Yes. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Councilman Nelson? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilwoman Waldman? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Bell? Yes. Motion carries. We now have uh, Home Depot with us, so we're going to deviate just one moment from the agenda. And I'd like to call Chang Akropa, Operations Manager, up, and Cecia Obergon, HR Manager of Home Depot, and Councilwoman Lobos. Gail, Ms. Gail Teresi is here to represent the Angel Rooms, along with Wendy Lobos. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Congratulations on your grand opening. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And I just want to express our um, apologies that day that Home Depot was opening, we're having the grand opening. We had set it on our calendar to be there at 5, uh, but we were unaware that they had moved up to 10 o'clock in the morning, so I'm sorry that we weren't um, able to be there. But uh, Mayor Bell did, um, along with Mr. Reese here, did tell us that you have a presentation for Angel Room, so I'm going to just go ahead and let you present it, okay? We would just like to say thank you to the City of Homestead uh, for all the support that you've given the Home Depot. We're finally here. We're really glad to be here. We're delighted to be with the city. Chang? Um, I'd just like to say that I'm happy to be working for the Home Depot and here. This is actually the city that I grew up in, so I'm happy to be home. Thank you. And we have a check for $2,000 for a store credit for Angel Rooms. Okay. And she can't carry it. Ms. Tracy, I will go ahead and take the baby, and I would like for you to come up here and explain what Angel Room is. Well, on behalf of Angel Rooms, we truly want to thank Home Depot when, when we heard that we were to be the recipient of this most generous donation. It is overwhelming. And, and Angel Rooms is very unique. I don't think there's another ministry within our community or even perhaps state county. What we do is we reach out to the young moms and expectant moms in our community. And Angel Rooms is an actual physical place where the mothers can come in and they can choose everything and anything that they need for their babies, from high chairs to strollers to um, changing tables to diapers to wipes and this is done all at no cost to them and we have some angel rooms moms coming in this is done at no cost to them and we can only do this and, and we exist 
because of the generosity of our community through private donations that someone calls and say, you know, Gail, I have a, a crib to donate or, or baby clothing, and then also through the most generous support of, and I'm going to say people like, like you and your employees and your management. I had an opportunity or I made an opportunity to go visit the new Home Depot, and I have to tell you that it was a real hometown experience. Um, felt very welcomed, and everyone was very helpful, and I had an opportunity to speak to Carol Ann, and she shared with me the heart of the employees and the management and the volunteerism that they do within our community. So it, could I have the angel and the moms stand up and maybe join us up here in, in their thankfulness also? I want to thank you for reaching out to these young moms in our community. And I think you know what the bottom line is, is that somebody cares. And I just thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Home Depot, and thank you, Gail. You can bring her up, Wendy. I'd be used to it. Just put her right on my knee. Mr. White. Yes, moving on with your quasi-judicial agenda, this is item 11. It's a resolution of the City of Homestead, Florida, granting site plan approval for the development of a 27,360-square-foot retail center, including a 3,500-square-foot freestanding bank building, a 23,860-square-foot retail building on approximately 2.38 acres of land located on the southeast corner of US-1 and East Maui Drive, west of Southeast Fifth Avenue, as legally described in Exhibit A and providing for an effective date. I'll turn a motion for approval. I move it. Second. Second it. It's been properly moved in second. I'll now open the public hearing. Staff report. Of any, any comment from staff on this item? Not this time, none. Thank you. Thank you. Would the applicant like to present his case? So again, Mayor, members of the council, again for the record, my name is Chad Willier. I'm an attorney with offices at 999 Ponce de Leon Boulevard here tonight on behalf of the applicant uh, with respect to this application. Uh, same as last time, I, again, if, if, if the council would like to hear a full presentation, we're happy to make one. However, the staff re reports uh, very uh, thorough, and we've been at this for quite some time. We've, I can assure you we've addressed all of the issues uh, over the last two and a half years, and we're very happy to finally be here tonight uh, requesting approval of the site plan. From Thank the you council. for making yourself available to this council as well. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any uh, questions or comments from council at uh, this time? Thank you very much. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Councilman Nelson? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilwoman Waldman? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Councilwoman Lobos? Yes. <laughs> Mayor Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. The second reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, increasing the membership of the Education Committee by adding four members and revising Section 3.5 Education Committee of Article 3 Codes, Boards, and Committee. Boards, Committees, Commissions of Chapter 2 Administration of the City Code by amending the City Code Section 2111, Creation, Composition, and Qualification, Providing Severability, Inclusion of the Code, and the Effective Date. This is the second reading and public hearing. I move it. Second it. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any comments from Council? Now open the public hearing. Any comments from the public? Close public hearing. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilman Nelson? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilwoman Waldman? Yes. 
Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Councilwoman Lobos? Yes. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Mayor Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Next time is the second reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, providing for an imposition of a moratorium on the issuance of development orders and permits and on the processing of development applications and land use plan amendments for town house, cluster, house, and multifamily residential units within the city and any proposed development over six dwelling units per acre. Exempting specified development provided for waivers, vested rights, appeals, and exhausting administrative revenues provided for a 12-month term to be extended if necessary by the city council, providing for conflict, severability, and providing for an effective date. This is a second reading and public hearing. I move it. It's been properly moved by Council Second Lobos. It's been properly seconded. Initial comments from Council. Stack report, please, Ms. Kamali. We have before us a chart. Everybody, we all have it. <coughs> we all have it on dais. If anybody has um, blackberries, would you turn them off? That really does produce a lot of interference with the microphones. I think we've pretty much attributed that to that problem. Ms. Kamali. Yes, Madam Mayor. Per, per your request, we put a staff recommendation for you. These are the three projects that they were in the pipeline. And uh, I went over every single one of them and put the status and the timetable and the recommendation of the staff. Uh, the first one is Portobello Estate that is on 9.2 acres, is 92 townhouses. And uh, uh, under the status column, you will see the date that they have been submitting uh, their application and when they went through DRC and PNZ. And uh, uh, the staff recommendation for Portobello State was, uh, since they've been in the process for about a year, uh, if they can be exempt, um, we recommend it to be moved forward and it's going to come back to you again for the zoning and the site plan both. And that's very, that's very important. What we're doing here is, um, if we go with staff's recommendation this evening, what we're doing is agreeing with staff's recommendation to carve these particular developments out from the moratorium, but they still have to go through the, through the same exact process, including site plan approval, site plan review, which would include the density. <coughs> so that still comes back before us. So it's not a blanket approval in, into perpetuity. So I, I want to make that very clear. This is specifically to just carve it out for the moratorium. Exactly. Uh, the second one is Portofino, uh, Portofino Park, which is a 13.6 acre with 136 uh, townhouses. Uh, the same thing, they have been through a, a long time process and we, uh, we recommended them to be exempt from the moratorium too. And the third one is Mercedes Home, which is an 80 acre. Um, the staff recommendation was since we don't have a site plan application from the applicant, and we are right now in the process of only a master plan, and uh, as of January, they submitted a land use change for 40 acres. Therefore, they are further down away uh, in the process, and we recommend for them not to be exempt. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Bell, I have a question. Ms. Lobos? Mm. So pretty much if we go with staff recommendation here on this uh, chart that we have before us, which means that Portobello Estates and Portofino Park be exempt from the moratorium, all we're really doing is waiving them from paying the $1,500 fee because they still have to go through the whole process. So we're pretty much just saying that they don't have to pay the $1,500 fee to go through the waiver process that has already been afforded for within the moratorium. Exactly. Thank you. Any further comments or questions from Council? Do we need to um, uh, restate the motion by carving out these two? Mayor Bell, can I just ask a question? Yes, Council Based, involvement. Thank you. Based on Ms. Lobo's question, so staff's recommendation to not include Mercedes Home, can they still come back and pay the waiver fee and still come before us? I mean, I, yes, uh, in the ordinance it specifically gives the guideline how they can do that. Okay, thank you. To answer your question, Mayor Bell, um, the ordinance does need to be amended to include to, to include an exclusion for these three items. Would the original maker of the motion just like, like to offer that amended motion? Was that me? Was that me? I believe it was you, Wendy. <laughs> well, I wish I would have known that. <laughs> A second. Do you want to or not? No, I don't. Can it be somebody else? Yes. 
Yes, really, once the motion comes on the floor, it's a courtesy to do what the mayor has done, but once the motion's on the floor, it really belongs to the body itself, so anybody can move to amend it. It's a courtesy that's normally done, which is what the mayor did, but anybody can move to amend to add these three projects. Well, Mayor Bell, may I have one more, um, I have one more comment to make? Certainly. This is pretty much the basis upon which we're going to do, or you're recommending tonight for Portobello Estates and Portofino Park is based on the fact that at the last meeting, we went ahead and did the same thing for Keys Lake. And pretty much Keys Lake was at the same, um, step in the process as these two properties were? Um, but Keys Gate was one meeting ahead of these other two. They had gone through one council meeting. Mm -hmm. Uh, before they came to you. These, they haven't gone through any council meeting. They have gone through DRC and PNC. Okay, so right. the motion on the floor then would have to be that we would um, move forward by carving out Portobello okay. Estates, okay. Portofino Park, but not Mercedes Homes? Correct. Correct. Keys Lake was further along than one meeting. We did a second reading on them. No. Where we gave them the 7.5, right? No, they were rejected. They were denied because they refused to work with us on the right, on your density. That's true. On your 7.5. There were only one. Yeah, we, yeah, but we gave that to them, right? And then they walked out of the room, and then they've since come back for reconsider or asked for reconsideration. You moved to reconsider right. the following right. meeting. So it wasn't two readings. Right. Just one. So the answer was yes or no? Yeah. If, if you look at your whereas clause on page 6, there's a whereas clause that memorializes the distinction made for Keys Lake and the process by which they were different and separate apart from these two, the two projects that are listed under staff recommendation to move forward. It's because they had already gone through the whole process and had gone to you for approval early in December before uh, the December 11th deadline was imposed in the moratorium. So then my next question is, if we go ahead and move this and approve this tonight, do we have other developments that could potentially come before us again so that we can at the next meeting amend the moratorium ordinance again to include those developments? No, not at this time. Thank you. This is, this is second reading. So this ordinance is effective upon adoption. So the, in order to further amend it, we would have to start with a, another ordinance that would have to go through two re go through two readings again if you wanted to amend it further. So Thank this you. would be Ms. Mayor Bell, may I I'm ask sorry. a question? Ms. Sierra. So this would be the last reading. This is the last, the last amendment. And let me be clear that we asked staff to go back and review. We asked staff to take a look at this and say, are there any applicants that were in the process that were so far along in the process that they should be considered. And I wanted to take staff's recommendation because we, we absolutely have to have that type of a recommendation on something this weighty. Now, the moratorium is at this point for a one year period to study the effects and to, to take a look at the infrastructure. And I think some of these projects will probably outdate the one year, but it's still something that we need to do. It's something that we have to do and carve out. So um, thank, thank you for staff giving us a recommendation. Mayor Bell, may I just ask a question? Councilwoman Waldman. Are there any other projects in developmental services besides the ones, uh, as Ms. Lobos asked, just asked? Uh, we do have other projects, but not something that... Of this magnitude. Oh, this is for medium density residential. Right. Right. We don't have anything with medium density or high, okay. visit, uh, high density residential. Okay. Thank you. You know, every time we have an issue like this, and when, when I, I remember that going back with, with other moratoriums, especially when we're doing the Southwest and the Northwest, this always does pose a problem. And where do you strike that balance to where you're trying to stop the overgrowth and try to put, put a curb to the, so that you can evaluate your infrastructure? But where do you find that reasonable balance to where you're not punishing people who have already been a, a a part of the process clearly a year before you began the enact, to enact that moratorium. So that's where you have to be fair-handed and fair-minded to strike that balance. And it's, you know, what I'd just love to say no to all of these, of course I would, but that's not, that wouldn't be fair because these people were clearly a year, a year into the process before the moratorium. So I just, just think that's part of, part of the process um, of, of being fair with the city of Homestead. But I, I, like I stated before, I do think a lot of these projects, some of these projects are even going to be further than a year out anyway. So, thank you. I don't believe you amended. May, Ms. May, Alvin, did may. You? I asked my, ask my question. Oh, thank you. Mayor, if I might. 
Um, <clears throat> since that's, um, I'm, I'm not sure, but if you, if you all are wanting to to exam both of these the, these projects, if that's where you all decide to go. In addition to listing those projects under the exemptions, I will need to change the language on page 8, number 8, of that one provision, because that one provision says any development that has received site plan or building permit approval and paid all required fees prior to December 11th. So that will need to be amended to more than likely say that any anybody who has um, received site plan approval or has gone to PNZ prior to December 11th, and that would uh, that would be for these three projects. Yeah, and this, and clearly this is it. Right. Okay, great, because we don't really want to see any more. Okay. Great. I think we can include that within the general amendment that we've just made. That would be the language we put in. Thank you. We still need an amended motion. Um, Mayor, but if I just may say one more thing is, and I'm not trying to drag this out, but if, if this were not to pass tonight, they would still have the option to come back to us through the waiver process. So it's not like we're completely shutting them out altogether. I mean, they still have options past this. Once we close the deal on this moratorium, there, are, there is a process for them to come back and go through and have us relook at this. Yes, you are 100% correct. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a motion to amend the original motion to include these two, to include Portobello and Portofino? I'll make the motion. I, I just didn't know if, oh, are you, Ms. Lovis, you go did ahead. Deny. Okay, I'll make the motion. This has been properly moved by Councilwoman Waldman. I'll second it. It's been seconded by the Vice Mayor. Any further comments or questions by the Council? <coughs> Open the public hearing. Would the public like to um, weigh in on this? If I may, for the record, my name is Michael Taylor. I work with Mercedes Homes. Um, I understand the staff's recommendation, but uh, we also like to respectfully request that we are excluded from the moratorium. Uh, we have been in the process for quite some time since uh, well back in December 5th of uh, 2005. We've consent, uh, spent considerable dollars. Uh, to date, we have over $26 million in the project. Uh, our December interest payment was $155,000. We understand that there is a, a waiver that uh, we can follow, although at, at, the, at the rate of uh, what we're paying just interest carry alone, it's, uh, it's getting to be a, an incredible hardship on us. Um, if you'd like me to, I, I stated it in the letter that I wrote to, to everyone here. Um, you know, we have spent considerable dollars and, and have gone through uh, our PUD sketch approval, uh, several um, traffic reports, various uh, uh, site plans, uh, amendments to those site plans. Um, we've resubmitted on several occasions a, a master site plan, PUD site plan for approval, um, and uh, we just continue to uh, uh, basically run into uh, hurdles that, uh, that uh, continue to, to jump up in front of us. Um, I'm not sure if you're willing to reconsider. Um, let, let me ask a question, if I may, as well. Uh, how long this waiver process, how long should it effectively take to be, to be, con to be considered? Uh -huh. The waiver process that's set forth in the moratorium, it, it could take as, it, 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 you have a certain time frame in which you can ask for it. You have 90 days, so depending on when you file for it, is when the ball, when we start processing it before a public hearing before the the council. So from the time that you apply for it until when you when when you're heard by the council, I'm sure staff would work to get it on the first available council agenda that they could from when you applied for it. But that's strictly going to be contingent on when you would ask for it or if you were to ask for it. When staff would get it, be able to process the appropriate paperwork and put it on the and move it forward on the agenda for the council. But in fact, we are talking about months, more than likely. Not necessarily for you to get on the agenda. I can't give you a definite time frame. Um, but like I said, it would it would it would be contingent on the next available agenda. So I, I'm, I I wouldn't say that it would be months, but I wouldn't necessarily say that it would that it would be two weeks either. Ms. Kamali. Yes, Mayor. I just wanted to mention for the record that we haven't received any site plan as of today from the applicant. We have had sketch approval and we have had application for a master plan, which is a requirement for a PUD. Thank you very much, Ms. Kamali. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I may. Ms. Sierra, Ms. Kamali, based on the fact that we haven't received this as a recommendation, am I correct? Uh, yes, we don't have a site plan yet because they haven't had an approved um, master plan yet. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Coca? Thank you. Um, Dick Coca here representing Prime Home Builders, the owner and developer of Portofino Park. We appreciate that Portofino Park is one of Mr. the... Mr. Coca, I believe you need to state your address for the record. I'm sorry, he's not, I'm sorry, excuse me, Mr. Coker. You're not listed as a lobbyist for this, on, on a current lobbyist. I have been thing. over the over the years on this project. Correct, but there's an annual fee that needs to be filed with our office. It hasn't been filed for this year yet. For this particular... For 2008, yeah. I was for 2007? Correct. Okay, yeah. then I will go ahead and take care of that at some point. Okay. Okay, may I speak? <laughs> Not really. Well, except it's a public hearing, Richard. Right, the lobby. Let me just check. It is the first of February of 2008. First time I've been back here this year. So. <clears throat> Are they recommended for approval? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a public hearing. Well, but if it's a public hearing, then why have a lobbyist registration? Yeah, but I was a lobbyist last year, and I guess it's 2008. Um, every time this has occurred in the past, we just go to the clerk's office the next day and fill out a form. Give us a moment, Mr. Coker. Thank you. I understand that this is a public hearing, but clearly there's a difference between a registered lobbyist and, a, and somebody from the general public coming up and speaking, so give us a moment. No, I think you're prohibited from speaking. That's the way the ordinance reads, and if you, and if you persist, which I know that you wouldn't, you could be banned from, from speaking with the council for some period of time. So I think the clerk is doing you a service. Well... It's a hundred dollar fee and signing a, I'll, be, I'll do it right now. Well, if the clerk okay. will accommodate you and the council will, that's okay. I mean, uh, this does seem a little unfair. I'm not trying to give you a hard time, but there is a lobbyist <laughs> registration. Or I understand. I do it. I've been doing it for like four or five years. I know. Do you and I've been on this particular project since 2004. Every year. Maybe the Maybe clerk's see. office can accommodate you by taking oh. care of this paperwork while the next gentleman speaks. Okay. Mayor Bell, may, may I just say that Mr. Coker has been the representative, and if you have a hundred bucks and you can pay it now, I, 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 I personally think, I know he travels a long way, he's getting out of his, his pocket change, um, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> Well, clearly, the, um, as, as was read by our attorneys, any lobbyist must register before addressing the council on any of the following items. So um, go, go excuse yourself and uh, pay your fine. He's paying behind that wall right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank Mistakes of the past do not dictate future behavior. Mm -hmm. Mayor Bell, can we continue to comment or are we on pause? Council certainly, set council certainly may continue okay. to comment, absolutely. And also members of the public that would like to speak are also welcome to speak. And the gentleman that was just here talking about Portofino Park, uh, PNC denied this site yes. plan but still staff is recommending it? Yes, the applicant has the choice to move forward. Okay. I think the most important thing here, Mayor Bell, if I just might add one more comment, is what Ms. Lobo said before. It doesn't matter. These people still have to come before us. You know, we still will have a right to... Yes, they're still going to come back yes. to you for the, for the zoning. Right. That you can discuss the number of units and the site plan. Exactly. And that's major. It's Thank only you. exemption to the... Right. To the Thank you. We, and, and I know we said that earlier. We want to make that clear one more time. This has nothing to do with zoning. This, this goes back. This comes back to us once again for approval. We can actually carve them out from the moratorium, have them come back before us, and deny them. I mean, there's nothing that would preclude council from doing that. 
This is just simply because of the time frame that they were within the process. It's, it's, it's simply, I guess you could simply call it a technicality. But clearly, they could come right back before us within a month uh, time frame and we can deny them. Or approve them, Mayor. Or approve them. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me out of trouble. <laughs> Well, since we're giving time, can we continue to comment? I have a comment. <laughs> <laughs> it is my understanding that um, PNZ denied the Portofino Park because of density. Is that correct? That's right. Thank you. That's all for my comments. And that will be coming back. And that will also be coming back before us if the, if the motion passes. <coughs> correct. I'm legal now. <laughs> I'm no longer illegal. <laughs> Mr. Coco, we just want to keep you out of trouble. Well, I appreciate that. My comments will actually be brief, if, if it's okay with you, because I, I did write you a... Did you state your name and address Dick, for the record? Dick Coker, uh, uh, 1404 South Andrews Avenue in Fort Lauderdale, a registered lobbyist of the city. Of, and um, proud of it, right, Dick? <laughs> proud of it, absolutely. <laughs> And I appreciate the accommodation. I appreciate that. Um, at the first reading, I wasn't able to make it. I had another uh, uh, hearing, but I wrote you a letter dated January 22nd, which I think laid out all of the issues with respect to Portofino Park. And we appreciate that you have, with the staff's recommendation, listed this project as uh, being exempt from the, the moratorium. And I would normally just sit down and, and let this vote take place, except there, there was a, a question about, well, if this vote doesn't pass, then there is the possibility of the waiver process. And let me just urge you uh, to consider this, because Portofino Park has been in various stages of approval before this council since 2004. A great deal of time and money has been put into changing this plan many times at the request of the city, reducing the density, changing the commercial, changing the residential. Uh, this has been going on. A sketch plan was approved in 2004. Uh, site, uh, uh, a PUD plan was approved in two, 2005. Site plan was submitted in 2006. A long history of this project. And if, in fact, you decide not to, uh, not to exempt this pro project from the moratorium, then it's another, time, it's, a, it's another period of time and a good expense of money before this project can come before you, the waiver process. Now, I can understand the waiver process would be a real help to someone who's on the bubble. Someone that maybe you're considering but you don't know all the facts. And it would be fair to them, you'd, hear, you'd have a full hearing. Um, but Portofino Park, I think any inspection of the public records or your records, the site plan approval process, the PUD history, will lead you to the conclusion, and I think your staff has come to the conclusion, that this project has gone through such a long, extensive development review process that it would be unfair to even make us go through the waiver process and, and charge the developer, um, I'd have to charge the developer time, uh, you'd be paying your attorney time uh, to go through this hearing. So we just urge you to take a look at this particular project and leave it on the exempt list uh, as the only fair thing to do. I will tell you that I've, uh, as you might tell from the gray hair, I've been around a few years and I've been through dozens and dozens of moratorium hearings, hearings, and I have never once, in the 30-some years I've been doing it, never once seen a local government adopt a moratorium without exempting projects that have gone through at least the P&Z board hearing, mostly projects that were in the hopper, meaning uh, gone through a DRC review or even an application filed. Usually they are grandfathered in. But I have never, it, but it changes, but I have never once seen a local government not exempt a project that has gone through a PNC hearing and waiting for a council hearing. So we ask you to consider 
these comments, the comments in my letter, and just uh, a general principles of fairness. And uh, if you're going to adopt this moratorium, please keep uh, Portofino Park as one of the exempted developments. And thank you for your consideration. Again, thank you for your accommodation on the lobbyist. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Coker. We'll now close public hearing. Any further comments or questions from Council? It's been properly moved and seconded. Further comments or questions from Council? The roll call, Madam Clerk. On the amendment. On the amendment. On the amendment first, and then on the, on, the, on the amended motion second. Okay. Councilwoman Baldwin? The, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Richard. This is on this the, is on the, the motion that I made. Add the exempted yes. project. The motion I made. Okay. Yes. Okay. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Councilman Lopez? <coughs> no. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? No. Councilman Nelson? No. Mayor Bell? Yes. Okay, motion carries on the amendment. Thank you. Okay. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Council Councilwoman Lobos? No. Councilwoman Waldman? Yes. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Okay, no. Councilman no Nelson? No. Mayor Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next time is a second reading of an ordinance for the city of Homestead, Florida, amending the city's comprehensive plan by amending the public school facilities under governmental coordination and capital improvements elements in order to meet the state mandated requirements of public school concurrency, providing for severability, conflicts, and effective date. This is a second reading and public hearing. I just had a motion for approval. I'll move it, Mayor. A second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any comments or questions from Council? Now open the public hearing. We'll now close the public hearing. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Councilman Lobos? Yes. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Councilman Nelson? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilwoman Baldwin? Yes. Mayor Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Next time is the first reading of an ordinance of the City of Homestead, Florida, amending the City Code by amending Chapter 28 Utilities, by amending Article 1 in general, by creating Section 2814 surcharge for county sewage treatment charge to allow the City to impose an additional fee by resolution to cover the increased cost of sewage treatment imposed upon the City by Mid-Dade County, providing for several building inclusion in the Code and effective date. I'll move it. A second. It's been properly moved by the Vice Mayor and seconded. Comments or questions from Council? I will now open the public hearing. Close the public hearing. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Councilwoman Lobos? Yes. Councilman McCormick? Yes. Councilman Nelson? Yes. Councilwoman Sierra? Yes. Councilwoman Waldman? Yes. Vice Mayor Burgess? Yes. Mayor Bell? Yes. Motion carries. Next time is a resolution of the City Council of the City of Homestead, Florida, approving a transportation proportionate fair share agreement between the City of Homestead and 401 US 1 LLC, providing for implementation, providing for an effective date. I'll entertain a motion for approval. I'll move it. I'll second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any comments or questions from Council? Hmm. Comments or questions from the public? All in favor say aye. 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 And the ayes carry. Thank you. We'll now open the floor for public comments. Business from the city manager. A couple of things, Mayor. First of all, uh, Friday night uh, we had the rotary auction, which uh, I think is going to be probably the largest uh, that we've had uh, so far using our new facility at Harrisville and our, our restrooms. But what I'd like to do is take an opportunity to thank uh, Parks and Rec and Marlene, Omar, his crew, uh, and General uh, Services Division, Mark Cooper Smith and Bernie, for doing some last minute <coughs> critical items that had to be done. We actually got a temporary CO for the bathrooms at about 530, <laughs> 525 I think, actually, uh, before the uh, function started at 6. Um, and there's still some items that, that we need to do, but we appreciate uh, the extra effort they did. Uh, phone line especially. Uh, we never could find out where the phone line went after the construction, so they had to put some new stuff in and did it real quickly. And uh, we appreciate that. Uh, Rotary appreciates it. But I think it was a good showcase uh, to start uh, with Harrisville out there for the Rotary. Had a lot of good comments. 
about uh, about the new facilities. Secondly, uh, City Hall will be closed on Monday, February 18th in observance of President's Day. Uh, garbage and trash will be collected as scheduled, uh, so hopefully no problems there. And then lastly, uh, a reminder, free income tax preparation uh, began the last past weekend. The IRS and the City of Homestead are providing this service to residents for free of charge. Uh, residents can have their federal income tax returns electronically filed, receive answers to their tax-related questions, and refunds can be direct deposited to their bank account within seven days. This service is available at the Homestead Family YMCA through April 12th, and that's at the corner of Campbell Drive and US 1. So. Thank you very much. <coughs> Reports of Mayor and Council. Councilwoman Waldman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Good job, Sheila. <laughs> for catching that. I thought that was, that was wonderful. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Tom Lambert and Captain Chong um, for their very fast response to the construction dust on the new, coming from the new school site on South Canal and 162nd. It's terrible. And I think the road construction on North Canal is probably uh, contributing to that problem. But even to, even after, I, I didn't see them watering today, and I have people at the clubhouse calling me and telling me when they when they do do that service. But just going down 162nd tonight, it was just a cloud of dust, just a cloud. So I don't know what we can do. It's been so dry with no rain, but um, but I know Captain Chong said that he was working um, with the developer, Julio. I don't know if you have talked to them or. Yeah, okay, so so then Captain Chong was the one taking, talking to the construction site. Okay, thank you. Also, um, and I know we've talked about this now for over a year, but every morning between 10 a.m. and 11.30 a.m., um, there's a blast that rocks the houses, and more and more people are calling me and saying they have uh, foundation. Uh, they fear that they have foundation problems, structural problems. So once again, I'd like to ask you to um, put out uh, the, the number and websites where people can, can complain. And that's east of the highway, you know, the houses east of the highway primarily. I haven't had any complaints of anybody on the other side or even in the Sky Vista area. But, um, but I know it's, it's very powerful. Um, it's been a really busy week. Excuse me. Um, <clears throat> Maya's Cafe had a uh, little party each for the uh, Mardi Gras, uh, pre-Mardi pre Gras. And I'll tell you, if you haven't had uh, Chef Collins' Creole creations, you're missing something. He really, he really knows how to cook. It was wonderful. Um, the Rotary Auction, great food, great auction items. Um, I'm glad I didn't win anything because I was spending too much money. <laughs> and just tons of fun seeing a lot of old friends and acquaintances. So good job to Rotarians. Um, the next morning I was at the Everglades National Park for the inaugural Park to Park Trailway Ride. Um, I want to thank Ms. Lobos for stopping, for stopping, taking the time just to come by. And uh, I'll reserve my comments about that bike ride until the next council meeting. Um, the chili cook-off, it was packed, and it was hot. But um, I thought this was so interesting, and I mean hot in more ways than one. <laughs> there was some chili, you can, if it passed your lips, you were gone. <laughs> but, um, but I had an interesting email today from Mary Finlan from a tourist that happened to be staying in town and went to the chili cook-off, and she emailed Mary for, for my recipe. And I said, I emailed, I, I told you, man, I said, I said, this is so interesting because people do. I'm insulted. She didn't email me for my recipe. <laughs> well, I'm not giving her my recipe. <laughs> Especially if we're going to enter next year. Um, but, but not only did she go to the chili cook-off, we had a chat at the, at the booth. I told her about the Mardi Gras parade, and in the email she went to the Mardi Gras parade as well. So, so I just think that's so amazing that people do take the time to write their chamber and, and uh, let us know that, that it's just not all locals that, that were there. 
And uh, speaking of the Mardi Gras, um, um, that's probably why I can't talk tonight. I was the co-announcer for the floats. Um, I have to say the king and queen were lovely. Um, they weren't together, but, <laughs> but they were lovely, a mayor and a vice mayor. Um, there were over a thousand people in that street, and I don't know, maybe there was even more than a thousand. There's no way of knowing, but it was great. And today was one of the most moving experiences, I think, that I've had since I've been on council. Um, today, United States Congressman Sam Johnson was honored by the military and all dignitaries, most all dignitaries from every city. Um, the new fitness center at the base was named after him, Congressman Johnson. He's just, he's, he was just, my heart was just, filled with honor for him. He was a prisoner of war uh, in Illinois for over seven years, and he just a great man, um, true hero, and I was the one that was honored to have been in his presence today. So thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Vice Mayor Burgess. Thank you. I, too, want to thank uh, the committee of uh, Main Street for their uh, great job that they did with the uh, Mardi Gras parade. I'm not sure they picked the right guy to be a king, but anyway, they put the crown on my head and I rode in the back of the car and it was a good time. I, did, I ran out of beads, so I apologize to all the people that were yelling at me who wanted beads, but uh, I was only allotted so many. Um, I, I want to thank Dr. Jacobs and her entire staff over at Miami-Dade Community College and uh, the, the, the beautiful luncheon that they gave us. Uh, they invited us all the entire <coughs> the entire council over there and, and, and gave us a nice luncheon and welcomed us and shared some ideas of what they'd like to do with, with the college down there to, to help our community and, and, and the whole South Florida area. So that was very nice to get to meet them. Um, Atlanta Bread Company opened up. I went over there and ate there the other day and, and met the owner and it's, uh, it's very nice. So we've got another great great spot to go and get something to eat here in town. And then uh, just the last thing, I'm still bothering some staff with some of the things that I've learned at our, at our conference, so I apologize if I uh, okay. pass too many recommendations or thoughts down the line to them, but it was quite an information weekend for me, and I think for the rest of the council members that joined up in Gainesville for the uh, kind of a, uh, a seminar for us to learn what we're supposed to be doing. Um, and, and, and share ideas of, of how other cities do it, and it was very good. So thank you, and that's all I've got to report. Ms. Lobos? Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor Bell. <clears throat> well, just the number of events going on in the city of Homestead, and I think that that's one of the advantages of being on council, is that we have the benefit of being invited to all of them. And so being aware of everything that goes on in the city of Homestead is just unbelievable at the... Um, at the chili cook-offs, and I know uh, Councilwoman Waldman already stated this, but it, it was uh, pretty amazing the number of visitors and tourists that we had coming through. People from upstate New York, people that had no idea this was going on, but they had just stopped by to shop for a shirt or a pair of shoes and wound up at a chili cook-off. Uh, we even had a gentleman come by the booth asking where the um, sales office for one of the houses were, and of course we were like, that way, go buy a house. <laughs> There was actually two sales offices. <laughs> right, so we were, um, it was very pleasing to just talk about the city of Homestead uh, to these tourists and encouraging them that if they're ever on their way down to Key West again to make sure and stop by our city and visit us again, so that was encouraging. <laughs> Aside from that, I mean, the number of events that have happened over the weekend, um, and I know Mayor Bell, I don't know if you mentioned this, but um, Congressman Diaz Ballard was here doing a... Um, a session on how to protect your children against internet predators. And I know it was a Saturday morning and not a lot of people came out for that, but we're going to go ahead, since it's such an important presentation, we're going to have them come back to a council meeting and present that, because it is very important information, especially for us parents that have um, teenage children. And that's, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilman McCormick? Saturday, I attended the chili cook-off, and uh, I had a wonderful time. I was serving chili. It was kind of out of the norm for me, but I enjoyed myself. Uh, the mayor's chili was good. Also, Councilman uh, Waldman's chili was good. She told me she had fresh vegetables, and things, so I, was, I needed it. It was healthy for me, so I enjoyed that. And uh, also, I spoke to Mr. Mr. Shahari in reference to some issues that were brought forth in the southwest area, so I'll be like, wait, waiting for some updates on that, and also some initiatives. So very soon, we'll get together again, me, you, um, Mr. Dan, we can also city manager Mr. Ivy and go over some things again and uh, try to get those things resolved in the southwest area. And that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Councilman Nelson. Um, 
Now, on January 26, I attended a DUI checkpoint out off of Chrome Avenue and uh, Campbell Drive. In the four hours I was there, they put through 453 cars, checking them for driver's license. They had 37 uh, citations. They arrested three people for DUI and another one for a traffic offense. Uh, it was quite impressive to see our police force, uh, the, the, the professional, just, just very good. They, they were just, it was awesome. A anybody out, they, uh, they advertise when they're doing it, and just to come by and watch it. It's, it's amazing the, the amount of people come through and the arrest for not driving with a driver's license. You know, it's, it's uh, pretty impressive. I also last uh, Saturday went to the chili cook-off, which was very fun, very hot, <laughs> and uh, had a great time. And uh, I would like to say something about Congressman Sam Johnson. What a, what a hero. Yes. Listening to his record and what he had been through in the Vietnam War was just amazing. And I'd like to say thank you to him for, for coming down here and being such an American hero. Thank you, Councilman. Councilwoman Sierra? I would like, first of all, i uh, like to start by saying thank you to Patty Sullivan for being such a wonderful help to me in uh, selecting the 15 members for the Education Committee. There were so many people that uh, showed such great enthusiasm in becoming part of this committee. I am honored um, by the turnout. It was just amazing. I've actually met with uh, Dr. Jacobs from Miami-Dade College. She's also sending a representative to the committee to help align our high schools and have a smooth transition into our college. I also met uh, with Mayor Wallace, since some of his schools actually feed into our schools. I went over and asked him for a representative or two from Florida City. And uh, if you never sat down on a one-to-one -one with him, it's kind of impressive. He kind of like leaned back and looked at me and said, you know, Nazi education is just a little too important to just send anyone over there. I think I'm going to be attending my meeting, your meetings myself. And that showed to me some extra commitment on the part of the cities coming together to be able to work with something that is so absolutely important. Um, because of the, the, the increasing number of people that want to participate in different areas, uh, we have had to change the meeting into the chambers. We'll be meeting in chambers to make sure that we accommodate anyone that wants to participate and help us in really turning around our education here in Homestead and bringing out the very best for all of us and all of our children. Um, I had a wonderful time this morning at Air Base uh, Elementary. Miss Patricia Faircar invited us to go over and read to the children. Quite amusing. I had a class of uh, fourth grade students and I asked them, well, I, I informed them, well, I'm a councilwoman. I was a teacher for 16 years. They all gasped as if that was, a, you know, an entire lifetime. And then I asked them, you know, I'm a councilwoman and I work with the mayor of the city of Homestead. Do you know what she does? And one little, very bright girl in the front raised her hand really fast and said, absolutely, she works with attorneys. <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, that's one of the things that she does. She works with attorneys. And what do you think she does with the attorneys? And I'm looking at the rest of the class, and she yells out, helps families through um, divorces. <laughs> You didn't know about that, did you? <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I said, well, that's another uh, item for your, uh, for your things to do, Mayor Bell. But um, it was cute because the rest of the students helps make laws, help us keep safe, works with our police. And, and it was just such a great experience. I haven't been in the classroom in about four or five years now, and I really miss it. And it was just great to have a, an opportunity to do that chili cook-off. Amazing! What what a turnout! So many people that don't live in Homestead were actually there, and it's kind of part of that dream of mine of making Homestead a destination, even if they come for one day. But to do something out here with us, what a great city we have! And um, I believe that's. Oh, I got to meet with uh, Congressman Mario Diaz Ballard on Saturday. Had an opportunity to speak with him and his representative Miguel Otero, who have both promised me that they're going to do whatever they can to assist us in Homestead with education. So that's another plus. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, 
We have a fantastic congressional delegation. Let me tell you, we are very, very, very fortunate to have the, the congressional delegation that we do with Mario Diaz Balar, Ileana Ross Slayton, and, and Lincoln as well. We're very, very fortunate. Um, the chili cook-off was phenomenal. Now, what they didn't say, so that I'll go ahead and say it, and, I, and I've left the big plaque in the car. Um, we won. Now, we didn't win anything for the mayor's really delicious but not so famous chili, but we won first prize for theme and presentation. So we did get the first prize, and we've got this great plaque that I'm going to be hanging up in the, in the city with the big ladle on it. So it is, and it was, let me tell you, it was a great time for council, and I cannot tell you, um, how many people that approached us and said how great it was for the, for the city council to be out there and to be serving chili and they, they loved that. They loved the fact that we were out there and it was very, very good for the city. And a lot of tourists who accidentally came, up, came upon the chili cook-off and then loved it and stayed there and stayed throughout the day. And we talked to many of those tourists too and told them about the, the Mardi Gras. We told them about all the events. There was about five events that we had on Saturday alone, just on Saturday, on our day off. So, um, but it was, it was a wonderful event. I also want to tell you that um, I'll, I'll be bringing that plaque in next time. And um, there's been, it has been so busy. I mean, it's just literally going from one event to the next. Unfortunately, many of those events are centered around food, <laughs> unfortunately. So uh, we'll be working on that. And um, I, I just wanted to, to, th to thank everybody, but let me tell you, it's been, it's been a tremendous amount of work, but it's been work that, uh, that's been mixed with lots of uh, love, and I, I'm just, we're just really enjoying it. Um, what I'd like to do now is um, move up the, um, put the, I'm going to do council, council committee assignments on the, on the bottom end of it, because I want to talk about all of them, and we're going to go ahead. Um, I will be appointing the planning and zoning board appointments at the next meeting. I'm going to be uh, consulting with one person, and we are going to together come up with planning and zoning board appointments, and they will be appointed at the next council meeting. Um, and I will, at this point, I'd like to move the education committee appointments as a whole. I'd like to move all these appointments. I'll second it. Okay, it's been properly moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 And the ayes carry. Uh, Ms. Sierra, thank you so much. I am so encouraged and excited about what I'm seeing in the area of education. Um, I am just thrilled. I would also like to add one more thing to that. Um, I have gotten three, I believe it's three emails where um, different people have seen on news spots, like um, when um, I think I did channel, channel 4 news, channel 6 news, and they've seen it. And one is University of Phoenix, the other one is um, Nova Southeastern University, and then the other one is, I think it might have been Walden, and they want to talk to us about bringing some type of um, extended education to the city of Homestead. So I'd like to give you that assignment, and I'll give you those contacts. Excellent. Okay, thank you so much. Th thank you very much. Also, um, the... Uh, we have a vacancy announcement for the Historic Preservation Board. And I wanted to um, share an article that was in the Palm Beach Post in the travel section, Sunday, January 13th, 2008, that was discovered accidentally by somebody who happened to be in West Palm talking about a pleasant stay at Everglades Edge. And it was featuring Homestead. And yes, and it's a whole article by Catherine... By Karen Colombo, Palm Beach Post staff writer, and it said, if you go, stay at the Redland Hotel um, at 5 South Flagler Avenue, Homestead phoned, um, talked about the range, price range, points of interest, Homestead Main Street, Spellbound Books, Mayo's Creole Cafe, Casita Tejas, the Fruit and Spice Park, Robert is here, and Everglades National Park. And this was found accidentally in the Palm Beach Post, Palm Beach Post where somebody was visiting Homestead and stayed at the Redland Hotel and loved it so much and went back and actually wrote an article about it. So I wanted to share that with you. So, and now we will do... I'm very excited about the, the uh, council appointments, council assignments, and I will go ahead and share them with council. Council committee assignments for 2002-8... Not yet. 2008 fiscal year. Mayor Linda Bell, Committee of the Whole, Hero and Economic Development, Charter Review Co-Chair, and Management Review. Vice Mayor John Burgess, Human Relations Board, thought you were a perfect fit. City Beautification. You know, I tried to listen during the campaign, and I tried to listen about to all of the candidates and to see where their heart was and where their, 
you know, thought that there needed to be improvement. And I, and I heard John talk about the city's beautification and something to do for our youth. I heard, saw him talking a lot about that. So I gave him um, human relations, city beautification, and the mayor's youth council. And with your wonderful wife, I'm sure she will be a wonderful help to you on the mayor's youth council. And talking about that, I am very seriously would like to restructure the Mayor's Youth Council to where it would still be legislative and that it is an actual council, but I'd like to see that Mayor's Youth Council become a little bit smaller. And I know the talk had been to expand it, but I'd like to see it become a little bit more service oriented. And John, I would really suggest that maybe you even um, call Amanda for any suggestions that she might have and maybe she'll help you volunteer for, you know, just, just a little while and get your kind of your feet wet. And I think that the, the trip that they take every single year, I think that that trip should be reserved for seniors only. That it shouldn't be just for every single child who's in the Mayor's Youth Council. I think it be, should be just for seniors. It should be something that they really look forward to. So I would reserve that as well. Um, also, I think there needs to be a strong um, education component to the Mayor's Youth Council. And I'd like to see them helping out with all the city events to really put you know, to really put a foot forward with helping out and be a little bit more service oriented. And um, Vice Mayor, too, anything that we can do to help you in that area, we would love to. Councilwoman Wendy Lobos, uh, Charter Review co-chair with me. Um, you will be heading up, and we already talked about the finance, but I decided that we should expand that to be finance and enterprise funds. Because if you look at the uh, wastewater sewer treatment plant and the uh, utilities department, those are enterprise funds. And so those are very uh, big dollar, you know, big dollar items. So I think that that should be all under one umbrella rather than separating them out so they're all coming under one umbrella. Um, also, uh, I'm putting you in charge of the city code, and you'll be the liaison between this council and Main Street. I also thought that we would do something a little bit different and add liaisons to the different not-for-profits so that there would be some type of um, input as well as accountability. One of the things I think we definitely need on the not-for-profits, especially when the city is funding them to a great extent, that we need to have some accountability. So the best thing to do is to appoint different councilmen and women to be the liaisons for the different not-for-profits. Councilman Melvin McCormick, Parks and Recreation, Community Redevelopment Agency. I've been listening to you, uh, Melvin, and your, your concern about redevelopment, your concern about the Southwest. And let me tell you, driving through the area and going through there, there has been great neglect in great parts of the. So whatever we can do to help you, uh, Mr. McCormick, as well. And Community Development. So you have Parks and Recreation, Community Redevelopment Agency, as well as Community Development. And I'll be handing this out to every one of you. And Councilman Sierra, Education Committee. You have the Tourism Committee. I know that you've talked so much in, about how your contacts and all the people that you know in Miami, so I thought that would be helpful. And um, Marketing and Public Relations. It's right up your alley. Councilwoman Judy Waldman, you are going to be our liaison with the Seminole Theater Restoration. You are the liaison with Art South, and we will continue with the Park to Park Greenway project, because I know these all are very, very near and dear to your heart, so we absolutely want you to continue with those. Councilman Tim Nelson, Public Safety. And with Public Safety, Mr. Nelson, I put Police Explorers, because I want to see the Police Explorers highlighted. I see these explorers at every single event. I see them directing traffic. I see them working. And I see very little recognition for these explorers. So Mr. Nelson, I'd like you to come up with something that we can show some type of recognition that they do so deserve. So I'd like to see some recognition. I've also created a new committee, and that is business development. And I imagine at one point you'll probably be working with uh, Councilman McCormick because he has community development, and you are, uh, we're creating a new one called business development. And uh, also you are going to be the uh, liaison with the business incubator as well. I figure with your business experience that this would be very, very advantageous to the community and be, and be right up your alley as well. Trying to pick the strengths, and, uh, the strengths that these councilmen have and the, their ability to work. So I'm very, very excited about these new councils, these new committees. And one of the things I did want to stress that Many of what we call chairs is really more of a liaison to different departments. But I really wanted to say this. 
because you are a chair or because you're a committee, it does not mean that you have cornered the market on having ideas for that particular area. If, you're, if, if my area is not education and Nazis is, and someone has an idea about education, they shouldn't be prohibited from presenting their idea because you're going to step on someone else's toes. And this is something that has happened in the past a lot. And so if you have an idea, if someone here has a great idea for public relations or marketing, bring it forward. We want to help each other and this community shine. Because if this entire council shines, this community shines. So whatever we can do to, to help this council out and within their committees and within the departments that they will be the liaison to, that will be the best thing that we can do for the community and for the city. So I'm very excited about those committees and I will hand them out. And um, anyway, I'm, I'm very excited about that and um, I think that's, that's it. So uh, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for coming out here tonight with the clear gavel. This meeting is adjourned. Excellent. Here you go.